Hi, welcome to the sensor series. In today's video, we'll be talking about the ECT sensor, which is the engine coolant temperature sensor. This video is going to be broken into three parts. The first part is going to be what is an ECT sensor, how does it work, and symptoms of a bad ECT sensor. And, and the second part will be basic troubleshooting using an OBD2 reader. And the third part will be an advanced troubleshooting with a DMM and an oscilloscope. So feel free to jump to the section you need, but I do recommend that first section as I think it gives a good basic understanding on how the ECT works. So the engine coolant temperature sensor does exactly what it sounds like. It measures the temperature of the coolant in an internal combustion engine. The ECT is typically located on the engine block or the cylinder head and uses two wires, one of which will usually be five volts, and it'll send the temperature reading to the car's computer. The typical ECT is basically just a thermistor that varies the resistance based on the temperature. So if the temperature goes up, the resistance changes, or if the temperature goes down, the resistance changes. Now, if you're not familiar with thermistors, basically it's just a fancy way of saying thermal resistor, and it's commonly used on your car for uh, multiple sensor types. Um, your external air temperature, your intake air temperature, your engine oil temperature, those could all be thermistors. There are typically two main types of thermistors. You have your NCT, which is a negative temperature coefficient, which means less resistance at higher temperatures. And you have your PTC, positive temperature coefficient, which means more resistance at higher temperatures. Now, ECTs are usually of the NCT type, so they have less resistance at higher temperatures. So in your typical NCT thermistor type ECT, we're gonna see the following. As the engine coolant temperature increases, the resistance will decrease. So basically, low resistance, high temperature, high resistance is going to be low temperature. So pulling it all together, it kind of boils down to this. Since the resistance change compared to the change in temperature is consistent and predictable, the amount of current and voltage at a certain temperature is also always going to be the same. So the computer can see this reading and know the correct temperature. And that brings us to why is the ECT so important? It's basically so the computer knows how warm your engine is. And this way it can adjust the fuel delivery, adjust the timing, know when to turn on EGR if needed. And it may also be used for turning on your cooling fans. Some of you may remember back in the old days when we had carburetors in our cars and we had the choke on the carb, which we would use when starting a cold engine to richen the fuel mixture. Well, when the PCM needs to send more fuel to the engine when the engine is cold, the engine coolant temperature sensor helps the PCM to know when to do this. Now, some of the symptoms of a bad ECT might be hard starting, sluggish performance, poor gas mileage, stalling, uh, black smoky exhaust, your engine overheating, rough idle, check engine light could be on, your engine just may be running too rich or too lean, and you may even have some DTC codes pop up like, you know, uh, 0115, 0118, or 0119. Okay, before we get into troubleshooting, I decided to do a quick pop quiz. So here's the question. On a typical NCT type ECT sensor, if the sensor came unplugged, would you see a high temperature or a low temperature engine coolant temperature reading on your OBD2 reader? Okay, if you answered low, you are correct. You will see a low temperature reading. And we'll see this in the troubleshooting steps that we go in the advanced section. But basically, with the sensor disconnected, you would have an open circuit, which is a high resistance. Okay, basic troubleshooting. There's going to be no need to go under the hood for this one. We're just going to use an inexpensive OBD2 scan tool that can read live data. Um, these can be picked up for as cheap as $15. So it's a nice inexpensive tool that um, is very useful and can save you some money. To start off, I'm going to plug in my OBD2 reader and I'm going to turn my key to accessory and go ahead and connect it. I do not want to turn the engine on at this point. I want the engine off. Now I prefer to start out with the engine cold and basically what we're going to do is we're going to watch the engine temperature go from the whatever the ambient temperature is outside increase up to the normal operating temperature and we're going to verify that there's no drops in the data and that it looks good. So let's look at a couple things here. First you can see that the engine is off. The engine RPM is at zero RPMs which is what we wanted. Second, look at the fuel system status. You can see that we're in open loop due to insufficient engine temperature. 
but the main one we want to look at is the engine coolant temperature. You can see right here it's third, saying it's 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit and I can look at my phone and I can see that yeah for my city it's about 37 degrees out right now. It's the morning and um, that's pretty much you know right on close enough. Um, another good thing to look at is the intake air temperature and that should be approximately the same temperature as your engine coolant temperature if your car has been sitting overnight like this one has. Now it's really rare for them to be identical like this. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And usually, you know, the, the air, like, like if you're checking this in the afternoon, um, you know, the air temperature is rising faster than a car that's just sitting there. That coolant's going to take a little bit longer to warm up to that ambient temperature and vice versa. If you're checking this, you know, um, late at night, you know, the temperature might be going down and your air temperature might be lower than your coolant temperature at that time. And obviously if you've been driving your car, um, your engine coolant temperature is going to be warmer. But that's basically the first thing we want to look at. Is this engine coolant temperature showing a temperature that looks like what we could expect? You know, is it if the car is cold and it's been sitting for a long time, is it close to what the temperature is outside? Okay, so I'm setting up a quick graph. And, and what I like about this app is I can set the time scale. So this is about eight minutes. And I'm doing the coolant temperature and the intake air temperature. So you can kind of see them. If you can see in the lower right-hand corner, they're, um, they're both, you know, 35.6 degrees and I'm gonna go ahead and start up the car I'm gonna go ahead and increase the speed on this um, 10 times so you don't have to sit here for this whole you know eight minutes that you see this go across but here you can see that the red is the coolant temperature and you can see that slowly increasing as the engines warming up again this is 10 times speed the Intake air temperature, of course, is staying pretty consistent. I mean, it did increase a little bit, probably because there's more warm air in that engine compartment. But this is kind of what you expect to see. Um, the things that I'm, let me pause it here for a second, show you kind of the things I would look for. The main thing I'd want to watch out for are some crazy drops or spikes in the temperature. So, you know, this may, you know, be something like, you know, it's at 100 degrees and all of a sudden it drops down to 40 degrees and then it's back up to 100 and, you know, something that looks abnormal because you know your coolant temperature is not going to dramatically change that much that quickly. And that could signify a loose wire or something. Or same thing in reverse, you know, any weird spikes in temperature as well. But as you can see here, this is looking normal. This is a steady rise in that red line, which is my coolant temperature as my engine's warming up, which is exactly what we'd expect to see. So without popping the hood and digging into things, we can just look at our OBD2 reader and we can kind of say, yeah, the, you know, to me, the engine coolant temperature sensor looks good on this car. I, I do not see any issues. It didn't start off crazy high, it didn't start off crazy low. It just looks like a normal range. But if you don't have a normal range or it is acting funny, I'm gonna get into the advanced troubleshooting next and we'll take a look at it with the multimeter and the oscilloscope. Great, thank you. You've made it this far, the advanced troubleshooting portion. We're going to look at testing the sensors and checking for cable or PCM issues. Just a reminder that this video is for entertainment purposes only. So first I'm going to check the wiring to the ECT sensor. And if you remember from chapter one, one of these leads will have five volts. It's kind of hard to see, but I have the connector pulled off and here you can see this ECT sensor and this one's located right on the block. See if I can get it down here for you to get a better view and there you can see it now I did pull the connector off already and let's go like this there that's a good view of it and here's the connector I pulled off of it already so you can see now these are pretty easy to remove you know it's just you push down on his here and you pull it off okay here I have the engine um, key on, engine off. You can hear that my fans are running. And we're just gonna do a quick check for voltage. I'm just gonna find a good ground spot and check each one of these pins. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, I'm checking one of the pins to ground and I do have 4.99 volts. So with the key on, engine off, I should have 4.9 volts or 5 volts going to this sensor. So this shows me that the wiring is good. Now I'm going to go to the other one, the other side of the sensor, and I'm just going to check to make sure that ground is good. I'll show you there. We'll see how much resistance is in there. Let's 
the, the connection. Uh, uh, 11 ohms I got going between that. So that's a really low resistance. That's just the resistance of the wire. Okay, let it back off. So at this point, I've verified that my cabling to the PCM is good. I have vi 5 volts on one side, and I do have ground on the other side, and I could uh, check the resistance between that, and it was really low, which is good. I'm going to have to voice over this as it was so noisy, but you can see I have the connector unplugged here, and we're showing negative 40 degrees. So this was kind of like that test question in the pop quiz we had earlier with the connector unplugged are you going to have a high or low temperature and we can see that it is negative 40 so low so next i'm going to go ahead and just short that connector out and we'll see that um, what we should expect is you know a short so that's going to be very low resistance and we would expect that to be a high temperature so i'll go ahead and you can see here i just have a couple jumpers i made for my back probes and I'm just going to go ahead and grab that connector and short it out and hopefully you can see in the background here when I do that the temperature should jump up if you can see right by my wrist yep you can see it jumped up to 284 degrees So at this point, I think my PCM would be good because it does recognize that low resistance as a high temperature and then that very high resistance that open as a low temperature. So I know it can recognize those values. Now there's always a chance that something could be just slightly out of threshold or it's not reading correctly at a certain temperature, you know, but I think that's kind of a lower risk. And, and this is just kind of an overall testing just to kind of show how I do it. So next I might grab my oscilloscope and here you can see that I back probed my connector and then we'll look at the oscilloscope. I always like to show off this little $35 oscilloscope. Um, I love this thing, it's kind of fun. Um, so it's not expensive to get an oscilloscope. Um, so here you can see that it's back probed and the connector's unplugged and I'm showing about five volts and you can see it's I have it set up for one volt per division and actually 20 seconds um, going across. So you can see that it's really slow, you know, the time span. Um, I wouldn't normally probably run it this slow. I'm just kind of doing this, but you can see here I was, as I was hooking it up, you know, I was bouncing around between zero and five volts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up. And you can see here that I have the connector plugged in and we're seeing about, you know, 2.8 volts. Um, so as the engine warms up, we're gonna see this voltage change and kind of like I did with the OBD2 reader, I would kind of wanna watch for any dramatic dips. Um, so I don't, I don't see any here, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty stable, um, but if, if we did see a lot of, you know, where the voltage is dropping off or something, that, that might kind of lead us to believe that, you know, maybe there is, you know, possibly still a cabling issue or, or something else going on. Maybe the connectors aren't seated very good too, you know, that can, that can always be a problem. And I also don't usually do 20 seconds per division. I mean, that, that's a pretty slow time. I'm just kind of doing that so you can kind of see, we'll be able to see that gradual slope as the voltage changes as the engine's warming up. And I'm gonna increase it to 10 times speed. So here you can see that the voltage is going down as the engine's warming up. So at this point, if I think the sensor's bad, I may just pull out the sensor and take measurements, you know, check it when it's hot, check it when it's cold. Sometimes a service manual might show you what temperature it should, what the resistance should be at a certain temperature and you can compare it then. But I'm not gonna bother, this sensor's good. I don't wanna pull it out, but, um, but that's a, another way you can actually check your sensor to verify it's functioning correctly. And just remember, um, there's other things you gotta kinda watch out for too. If you're, like, if it's not functioning properly, maybe you don't have enough coolant in the engine or a blocked radiator or thermostat. Um, just some things to keep in mind um, when you're troubleshooting. But anyways, that is gonna be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate it.